Good morning, Harmony Grove. Good morning. morning. Hey, if you're in the back, come in in and join us. Got a couple announcements as we begin. Um, It has felt a lot like summer this week. Um, We've been mentioning our summer barbecues um, over the month of June. Um, If you are interested, there's a couple in the back. We're going to have three in July. Um, These are just people who are opening up their home, um, time of fellowship, time of food, um, just a time to get to know one another. Again, there are two of them in the back for July. There'll be a third one in July as well. I think there's going to be four in August, um, so you can be looking out for them. Again, they're in the back right underneath the TV if you are interested. Second announcement, this is a a personal announcement. Um, Many of you know that we're going to be taking in my mother-in-law. She was here in church last Sunday. Um, We are moving. We bought a house on Davidsburg Road. Um, We load up on Saturday morning. So if you're all afraid, and who doesn't like to help somebody else move, um, you can join us up at the Parsonage, 8 o'clock Saturday morning. We'll start loading up uh, and heading over to the new house. Final announcement. It's beginning to look a lot like VBS, right? Chase, I'm glad you're excited. I'm excited. Fun starts tonight. We got 39 kids currently signed up. That means y'all who are last minute people, you can still sign up on the church website. Um, A couple of things. Kids, you get here at 6.15. We start at 6.30. Leaders, um, first night, if you can be here around 6, check in, make sure your area is up and running. Um, On the front pews here, you'll see the different um, age groups. You'll be a dolphin or a seal or or something or other. Um, We'll start here at um, 6.30. You'll see a lot of us this morning in these awesome aqua shirts. At the end of the service, um, we're going to invite you up for our closing prayer. We're going to do a time of dedication uh, for the leaders. So, again, during the, the closing hymn, we'll have you come on up. We'll do a closing prayer of dedication. Um, if you have any questions about Vacation Bible School, um, you can see Carla or Betty if you have any last minute questions. And at this point, it's kind of like there's almost nothing else you can do instead of in, all we can really do is pray and trust God that he's going to give us amazing kids and a great week. So as our church body, we invite you to pray with us this week. Um, we start at 630. So every night as you sit down and you have your family dinner, um, as you pray to bless the food, Pray and ask God to bless that night of vacation Bible school. Um, That would be a huge help for us as we expect God to do great things this week. Hey, we're going to start our service with a word of prayer. I'm going to let Charlotte pray and we'll begin singing in a moment. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for today. We thank you that we are blessed to be able to sing your praises and learn from your word today, as we should every day. And Lord, we just pray that you will just help all the details to come together for VBS tonight, all the leaders to be in place, the children to come to hear your word. And Lord, we just pray that those who have never accepted you will do so this week, Lord, that those opportunities will arise and that our leaders will just walk through those opportunities with the children that that come and lord we just pray that you'll bless this service this morning in jesus name we pray amen please stand as you are able as we begin with same power
Okay, our scripture reading this morning is Matthew chapter 8, verses 23 through 27. Now when he got into a boat, his disciples followed him, and suddenly a great tempest arose on the sea, so that the boat was covered with waves, but he was asleep. When his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. But he said to them, Why are you fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. So the men marveled, saying, Who can this be that even the winds and the sea obey him? Please stand as you are able as we continue with To God Be the Glory.
just after VBS last year, I believe, Carolyn and Betty start planning for VBS this year. I was talking to Betty at their Sunday school. I was like, how are you doing? It's finally here. It's like, we're excited. Like, this is going to be an awesome week. So welcome to VBS, finally here. Appreciate that. VBS is really my favorite week of the church year because it's really a week for everyone. Kids, come, invite your friends. You're going to have an awesome time. But everybody else can help out in some way. We've had guys building sets. We'll have people coming each night to lead kids or play games or do crafts, snacks. There's a little bit for everybody. And even if you're um, not able to physically come, we really need your prayers. We ne really need God to move on behalf of VBS. So I want to take a moment and give you a little bit of a preview of what the Bible time is like. So each day we have a Bible point. Um, this is kind of like the big idea, the main thing we're trying to get to our, across to our kids. And then as we say it, we're going to have the kids respond by saying, thanks, God. So if I go, God is a friend for everyone, they will respond by saying, right? God is a friend who is real. We're going to get this by the end of the week. God is a friend who loves. All right, we got two more, so let's pick it up here a little bit. God is a friend we can trust. Thank God. And then God is a friend forever. Thank God. So God did a really cool thing with today's lesson. If you've been coming here, you know we're going verse by verse through the book of Matthew. Um, but in our fourth lesson, God is a friend we can trust, the lesson is actually the same Bible passage we would be going through in Matthew. So Jesus comes a storm is both our text this morning and it is also our Thursday or excuse me our Wednesday night Bible lesson. So you get a two for one today. You get a VBS preview if you're into VBS or if you are enjoying our study through Matthew, you also get the normal passage we'd be going through. Isn't that pretty cool? Some of you are, aren't with me. Some of you are like, hey, I see the irony in that. Praise the Lord. Um, we are going to go through a whopping uh, five verses this morning. Butch got off a little bit easy with the reading. Um, if you're not there, uh, page 555 in the Pew Bible. If you have a, a Bible app, we use the New King James. Um, we are right in the middle of Matthew 8, verses 23 to 27. Let's take a moment, we'll pray for our message, and we'll get into our text this morning. God, thank you that you are good. Thank you that you are a friend we can trust. Lord, that you are with us on the mountains, you are with us in the valleys. God, you are with us in the storms of our life. In all these times and in all situations, you are a friend we can trust. So God, we ask for your help as we look at this text. In Jesus we ask, amen. If you want to take notes, got to insert some blanks you can fill in. First point is following Jesus. Begins by saying now when they got into the boat. So now at the end of the day, and this has been a long day. You got the Sermon on the Mount. Got a morning full of Bible teaching. You got various miracles Jesus has done in chapter 8. He's healed the leper. He's healed the centurion servant. He's healed Peter's mother-in-law. He heals people all throughout the night. Now after the disciples have heard and seen all these things, now Jesus says to get in the boat. And when Jesus says to get in the boat, you know what they do? They got in the boat. They followed Jesus at where we looked at this two weeks ago before Father's Day, before the heat wave, before all these things happen. The end, uh, the few verses, there are some other people who want to follow Jesus. And Jesus actually has an open spot. There's only 11 disciples at this point. And one says, yeah, Jesus, I want to come. If this is what following you is like, sign me up. I'm here for the miracles. And Jesus says, well, it's not going to be all mountaintop experiences. You know, foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests, but there's times where I don't have anywhere to lay my head. And the guy goes, ooh, I'm not here for the, for the bad times. I'll back out. Another says, hey, Jesus, I'll follow you. I just got this one thing I got to do first. And he leaves. 
But when Jesus says the disciples get in the boat, you know what they do? They, they get in the boat. And they go across the sea. So the G, Jesus gets in the boat and the disciples follow. Why? Because God is a friend we can trust. See how that kind of comes in? We're going to work that in today. So, to be clear, the disciples are following Jesus, and the disciples are exactly where Jesus wants them to be. We got that so far, right? Good. So they get into the boat. You might be thinking, what kind of a boat? Because, you know, we like boats. Something cool happened. In 1986, there was a drought in the Promised Land. Just kind of like the droughts that have been out west, and if you followed some of those, as the droughts went into their second and third year, some of the lakes went lower and lower, and they were finding stuff that they never knew was there, and they were solving murders, and the, all this stuff was happening because, you know, like in the Lake Tahoe, the water level went lower and lower and lower. 1986, this happened on the Sea of Galilee, and, and the water levels went so low, they actually found a first century boat. You can look it up, wiki it. Sea of Galilee boater, Jesus boat. 27 feet long, seven and a half foot wide, four foot high. This is the type of boat they would have used in Bible times. Good boat if you have two men in the front, two men in the back, and you have a, your nets in the middle. Good boat if you want to cram 12 people onto a boat. If you're cramming 12 people in a boat, this isn't like sitting in the sanctuary where you got some buffer space, where you got some room to spread out. No, no, this is probably shoulder to shoulder people going across the sea that day. You got the picture, right? We're all nice, we're all cozy, we're all in the boat. So they get into the boat, and suddenly, in the New King James, a great tempest arose. They get out on the water, and all of a sudden, there is a storm. And not just a storm, the storm. There's two words for storm in the Greek. There's a normal storm, and then there's this storm. Great storms all have the same word. For example, this is the same word for earthquake in the Greek language. Earthquake and hurricane, we're going to call it, have the same word. This is like, what kind of storm? No, 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 it wasn't just a storm. It was the storm. Half of the disciples are fishermen. And they call this the storm. The hurricane-type storm. The storm that came across and got them all thinking, oh no, what's going to happen next? You ever been in a crazy storm like that? One of my favorite movies is Twister. Charlotte and I have been watching it the last couple of nights. I, I, there's something wrong with me. We know. We know. So when I think of this, I'm like, okay, this is the, twi this is the hurricane. This is the storm that changes everything. The storm, the hurricane, the earthquake storm, it arose so that the boat was covered with the waves. Let's take a side note. We, we talked about this in Sunday school. One of the cool things about going through the Bible is that you can pause at times and you can fast forward and you can rewind. Now, for the disciples, up until this point, all they had was 824. They got to live out 825 and 826, but we got the whole Bible. So we can fast forward and re rewind at times. So if I were going to rewind and I were to ask you, when was the last great storm in the Bible? When was the last storm like this in the Bible? Anybody know the answer? Sophia, you got a hand up. What's your answer? The flood. That, that is a great storm in the Bible, but that wasn't the last great storm. What do you got? Jonah, good job. So the last storm like this in the Bible was actually Jonah. And if you know the story of Jonah, Jonah's running from God. God says, go east. Jonah's like, I'm going to go as far west as possible. And as they get across the Mediterranean Sea, probably heading for Spain, this storm shows up. And the people in the boat had the same reaction. We all going to die. And they're like, well, why is this? Jonah's like, it's me. It's my fault. And sometimes storms happen in our life, 
and there are faults, right? Look, you go 135 on Harmony Grove Road, and you get in an accident, you know what happened? You just done did it. That is your fault. Because most of us have had an, a Harmony Grove Road experience during the speed limit, and if you're going to do three times the speed limit on our road, we'll pray for you, and we're going to be sorry for you, but we're all going to know, like, what are you doing? Even a Corvette is not meant to do 135 on Harmony Grove Road. Sometimes storms are our own fault, they're our own doing. Is this the case here? The storm didn't happen because they were running from God. God put them in the boat. This is exactly where they should be. Following Jesus, all of a sudden they found themselves in a hurricane-type storm. Leads to another question. Well, if we're in real trouble, how could this possibly be God's will for my life? Let me ask you this another question. How many of you have ever taken a trip, like the disciples were taking a trip, and you ask people to pray for safety? God, get us to fill in the blank safely. Nod your head. We've probably all done that. Hey, we're going to say a quick prayer as we head out across the sea. Now, granted, half of them are fishermen, and they've been out in this boat all their life. Hey, if this is God's will, how can it un be unsafe? Like we have this idea sometimes in our country that safety and godliness go hand in hand. And it's just not true. For example, if God's will is for you to always be safe, then how do you answer the Christians in Iran right now? Or the underground church in China that can be raided at any time's notice? Was it safe for Jim Elliott to go down to the jungle in Ecuador? Or how many of our forefathers have been killed for their faith because it was God's will for them to preach, and in preaching the word of God, they end up giving their life? Again, I'm not saying you should never pray for safety, but just because something doesn't go according to your plan does not mean it is not God's will for your life. And in fact, often life doesn't go according to our plan. And maybe that's exactly where God wants you. This isn't a storm because they're running away from God. This is a storm because God is drawing them closer to himself and showing them that God is a friend we can trust even in the storms of our life. So we praise God. Third question I got is, well, why is Jesus asleep? I mean, think about it. There's a hurricane, an earthquake type storm. The boat is getting smashed with waves. And where is Jesus? He is asleep. Why doesn't God just get up and fix it right away? When we go through a trial, when we go through a problem, why doesn't God just immediately send lightning bolts or send fire or just immediately, bam, fix the problem in our life? That's often what we want, right? We don't like this. God, you should fix it. And get... God doesn't choose to fix it right away, does he? Where are, what is the concern of the disciples? Disciples run to Jesus and they wake him up. They say, Lord, save us. We're perishing. Don't you see all this stuff happening? Why are you doing something already? They're more focused with the waves outside of the boat than the Savior in the boat. Their focus is wrong, isn't it? Mark puts it this way, 
Jesus was in the stern or, or in the back of the boat. He's asleep on a pillow. And they woke him. They said, don't you care? We are perishing. My translation, don't you care? We're about to die. This is not what I signed up for. Again, they're not in a storm because of disobedience, because of obedience. Sometimes it's so easy to focus on the storms of our life and everything that might happen, and we don't focus on the Savior who is with us, who is the answer to what is happening. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil for Jesus is in the boat with us. Everything they need for the storm in their life is right beside us. And so often our focus is on the storm and not on the Savior. Right? And what this storm is going to show that God is a friend you can trust, even in the valley of the shadow of death. Praise God. And how often are we like the disciples? <clears throat> Jesus will say a phrase as we go forward. Again, we can pause, we can go backward, we can go forward. Going forward, Jesus is going to start saying a phrase. He who has ears, let him hear. Not just did, did you hear it, did you get it? Because the disciples just had a morning of the Sermon on the Mount where they got three chapters full of Bible teaching. They were fed, they were full. They've had a day experiencing the power of God. Jesus heals the uncurable disease. Jesus heals the servant. Jesus heals Peter's mother-in-law. P Jesus heals people all night. And how often do we respond like disciples? Hey, hey, I'm glad God is working in your life, but when the trials happen to me, I'm going to run with a chicken with my head cut off. They just saw Jesus work, and they saw Jesus work, and they saw Jesus work, and they heard Jesus teach, and they heard Jesus teach, and they heard Jesus teach. And it was great for everybody else, but when it happened to them, how did they respond? God, aren't you going to do something? We're about to die. And sometimes we can say, hey, God's worked in our past, but we get fearful because God's not going to work in our present. Or sometimes we could see, hey, God works in those people's life, but why is not God working in my life? And we focused on the storm, and we forget to see the Savior who is with us in the boat in the middle of the storm. And this is the point. God is a, someone you can trust. So they wake Jesus up, and they... Jesus gives a question and a statement. The question is, why are you so fearful? In the Greek, there's two words for fearful. The first word is the word that we're commonly of use of. The first word is phobia. Right? So how many of you have ever heard of arachnophobia? That is the fear of spiders. Right? We got the fear of heights. We got we got these fears, and sometimes we give them names, and it's like, okay, arachnophobia, you're afraid of spiders. You don't really have to be afraid of spiders, but we understand that's okay, right? You're afraid of heights. That's a little off, but that's okay. And we can explain away some of our fears because, let's be honest, we're all afraid of something. This isn't the word Jesus used. When he says you're afraid, it's not that you have a phobia. It's not that you have an understandable fear. Actually, the word Jesus is used is coward. He says, why are you guys cowards? Or why do you have cowardly fear? Right? Coward is you come up to a situation and it's that fight or flight, right? Remember that from ninth grade science? And some of you are going to dig your heels in, and you're going to be stubborn, and you're going to fight the bully, and some of you are going to go, oh, no, I ain't doing this, and you're going to hightail it out of there. And this is how Jesus responds to their heart. The heart of the disciples is, after hearing Jesus teach, 
and seeing Jesus provide and do great things again and again and again, when it happens to them, they run and they're cowards. O oh, you of little faith. Because the teachings of Jesus are, if we have faith as small as the mustard seed, we can say to this mountain, be moved. Or we can say to this storm, be still. Or we can say that God is with us. Who can be against us? And the answer is, no one. Instead of trusting that God is with them in the boat, in the storm, they run and they're afraid for their life. So Jesus stands up and he rebukes the storm. The idea is he gives it a command based on his authority. It says in the book of Mark, and I think this is the text for uh, the lesson on Wednesday night. He actually says two things. He says, peace, be still. The idea of peace is he says to the, the storm, be calm, and to the waters, be still. How many of you enjoyed 90 plus degrees every day this week? And... Hopefully it breaks this week. How many, of you, how many of you enjoy that? It's amazing when you get in the winter and like we get a snowstorm, everyone says, oh, I can't wait till the summer. I can't wait till it's hot. And then we get to the summer. Some of you are posting on Facebook, oh, I can't wait till winter again. No, no, you people are wrong. Like I'm a redhead and I get sunburned and I even want this as opposed to two feet of snow in my driveway. So... I got a room for two feet of snow? Look, Chase, we're moving this week. There's a reason we moved away from Buffalo. Like, no, 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 no. We ain't going back to two feet of snow. And by the way, two feet of snow, five feet of snow at times. Some of y'all from Maine, you even got more than that. Eight feet of snow. First week of summer, how many of you got in a pool this week? Anybody get in a pool this week? A couple of the kids couple of the adults. Pool sounds kind of nice this time of the year, doesn't it? Favorite part of the pool is when you see the pool that's been untouched. It's like perfectly calm. Nod your head if you know what I'm talking about. My favorite thing to do as a big kid is to yell cannonball and to jump in and try to make the biggest splash in a calm pool that I possibly can. You have one kid jump in and cannonball, get out, how long does it take for those little ripple effects to calm down to go perfectly still again? Well, you never see it because another kid's going to jump in. But even after everyone gets out of the pool for the day, it you know, can take an hour or more just for you know, the little kids playing for the waves to calm down. The cool thing about this storm is you get this hurricane storm, right? This massive storm, the storm where these lifelong fishermen are like, this is the storm. This is the one that's going to get us. This is the one that's going to kill us. This is the storm we've never seen before. Jesus says to the storm, peace or be calm. And he says to the waves, be still. Because even if the storm is calm, how long would it take for the the Sea of Galilee to, to simmer down after a storm like that. You go from having 12-foot waves to nothing? Even if the, the wind ceased, even if the lightning stopped, even if the rains halted, how long before, just to going like up and down in your boat, how long till that evens out? And Jesus says, peace, be still, and everything changes. And this is the power of God. That when God shows up and God moves in our life, everything changes and everyone knows it. By the way, over time, if we're not careful, 
we can be like the disciples. Disciples start out that morning, they were fed. They, they got the Sermon on the Mount. They got three chapters of the teachings of Jesus. And they heard and they listened. And they, they, they knew and they had ears and they understood, but they never really applied it to their life. They saw God work in other people, and yet when it was time for them, they never really applied it in their life. And here's the honest truth. Storms reveal your true faith. Jesus says to get in the boat, they never thought a storm was coming. We can't plan out storms, right? I can't look at my Google Calendar and go, you know what, God, next Thursday, if you want to send something, uh, that would work into my schedule. If you want to test my faith then, uh, we could do 20 minutes if you like. That's not how it happens, isn't it? A couple of things about storms. We're all going to go through them. They're not on any of our calendars. They're often bigger than we want. And the ripple effects go wider than we can imagine. Because if we were saying, hey, you can get a storm, we're like, I'll take the, I'll take the kiddie pool waves, right? We'll, we'll, let, the, we'll let the big waves for, for other people, but, you know, if I have to go first, give me, give me the one-foot waves. And that's not how life works. Jesus says to get in the boat, The storm wasn't because of their sin. The storm shows their faith. The storm was meant to draw you closer to the Father because God is a friend we can trust. And how do we learn to trust him? Well, we can understand how to trust him here, but we learn how to trust him out there when it's unexpected and when it's real in our life. So storms will reveal your true faith and how you respond will have ripples in the other people's life. So your kids and your grandkids need to see real life faith during the storm. This is how we pass on the faith to our kids. This is how we have the credibility to share our faith with our coworkers. Because at work, storms are going to happen to everybody, but you got to be able to one that through your actions say, no, 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 I trust in God in this. God is a friend we can trust. And God is the one who walks with me in the dark valleys, and God is the one who's going to help me get through. Don't want to leave verse 27 out. So the men, again, half of them fishermen, Matthew writing this, grew up on this lake or sea. They're marveled. Again, this is the word that you're awestruck. It's kind of like, I don't have any words, but sometimes your mouth just keeps on running. They're overwhelmed, saying, who can this be? Who is this man? Even the winds and the waves obey him. And this is the question we're going to be asking the kids this week. This is the question we have to ask ourselves. Who is this man? Who is Jesus really to you? I mean, to some people, Jesus Christ is a swear word. To others, he's a, he's a person that they heard about in their youth. To some, he's a good person. Again, it's one thing to, to understand who he is, but it's another thing to put your faith in Christ as your Savior. Look, we can't get to heaven by being good. God so loves you, he sent his son. If you would believe in Jesus, you don't have to perish. You can have everlasting life. That Jesus isn't someone we just trust in the storms of our life. Jesus is the one where we trust with our soul. And he is the way of our salvation. As we wrap this up, we pray that God does great things this week in Vacation Bible School. And one of the things we're going to be asking our kids is the same thing we're going to ask you. Not that you know about Jesus, but have you ever trusted Jesus as your Savior? Ask him to forgive your sins. 
trust with him for your eternal state. And if you've never trusted in Jesus, you can bow your head, you can turn from your past, you can put your trust in Jesus as your Savior this morning. So when was the last time you stepped out in faith and truly trusted in God? Look, storms are going to come. And sometimes the storms are a result of our silliness, but sometimes storms are there to draw us closer to Jesus. Do you trust Jesus with the storms of your life? Not can you say the Bible point, but do you know in your heart God is a friend you can trust in the moments that you're in the valley, as you're going through the wind and the waves, and whatever life has thrown at you, that you're going to put your faith and you're going to stand tall and you're going to trust that Jesus is there with you. We got a great week of vacation Bible school, don't we? Hopefully you understand that God is a friend you can trust. Moment, we're going to pray. And as we pray, the worship team will miraculously appear on the stage. We're going to sing a, a few verses of our final hymn. And as we go through our final hymn, I'm going to invite our vacation Bible school workers to line up across the front. And we will close um, with a time of uh, dedication for our VBS workers this morning. Let's pray together. God, we thank you that you formed us and that you know us and that you love us. You so loved us, you sent your son Jesus, that if we would believe in him, we don't have to perish, we can have everlasting life. But Lord, that you just don't forgive us, Lord, you walk with us, you're a friend we can trust in all moments of our life. So as life is unexpected and the storms are, are harder than we would like, Lord, that you draw us close, that we know your power, that we can feel your presence, that you walk with us in the dark valleys of life. So we thank you for you are good. It's in Jesus we pray. Amen. Hey, stand and sing with us. And as we sing, leaders, make your way forward for our clo closing prayer.
I'm going to ask you, VBS leaders, to take a baby step forward. I'm going to let the people who are helping on the stage come on down. So you take a, take a baby step towards the middle as well. It's up to you two, because you're in the middle. Uh, actually, Sophia, give room for Mama right there. I can't have the giant standing in front of me. Um, we're going to pray. We'll pray a special prayer of dedication. Um, after we're dismissed, um, if you want to come up and encourage our VBS workers or tell them they're, you're praying for them this week, we could use your prayer as well. Um, again, 6.30 tonight we start. Um, we still have some open spots, so we could use a few more kids. Um, we will pray and we'll be dismissed. God, thank you so much for all the planning and for all the hard work and everything we've done up until this point, Lord. Um, we understand in the Bible that faith without works is dead. And Father, you've seen our works, Lord. You've seen our um, going through the lessons and preparing for snack and craft and games and singing. And God, hours upon hours that we've put into this moment. Lord, all the invitations we've given out and, and sharing it on social media and all these things, Father. And yet... Lord, by faith, we pray that you would do great works this week, Lord, that you would allow kids to show up, that you would open their hearts to hear and to receive, Lord, that you would move in, in families, Lord, that you would use us, Lord, as you said the prophet Isaiah, who can we send? And Lord, here we are. Um, we, we've stepped up, Lord. We've given our time and our talent. And God, we pray that you would bless these efforts, um, that you would do things in kids' hearts, that you would do things um, through the theme and through the lessons, things that we can't do, Lord, that you would uh, draw kids to yourself, that uh, salvation would come to many, that the kids would uh, align their hearts with you, Lord, that you would see real life faith lived out in our young ones. So Lord, to us as leaders, God, we pray for your, your hand upon us, your blessing, your spirit to move within us. Um, Lord, that we would uh, praise you for great and many things that you are done this week. So God, we give this to you and we trust in you for the results. So Lord, we ask for your blessing as we leave, um, as we go through this week, Lord, that we would trust you even when it's hard. Lord, in the storms of our life, Lord, that we would seek you and you first and you foremost, that you are not a God who leaves us, but Lord, that you are a God who is with us even in the storms. And we thank you for this, and we trust in you. In Jesus we ask, amen. We're dismissed. <laughs>